Happy Easter! Happy Easter, everybody, and welcome to worship here at Canyon Lake. I'm Pastor Brett, and I'm your teaching pastor. I'm Hayden Bentz, and I'm the online worship coordinator here at Canyon Lake. And I'm Pastor Deanne. I am the lead pastor. And we would like to begin today with a traditional Easter greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, let's go ahead and continue our time of worship together by singing uh, our opening song, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Friends, will you please join me in the unison prayer? Risen, Lord Jesus, as the rising sun scatters the darkness, let fear and the loss of hope be scattered from our souls, that we may live in the glorious freedom of the new life you have given to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, happy Easter. I am so glad that you are joining us this morning. I brought a really big egg today. Hmm, I wonder what's inside. Before I open this egg though, let's talk about some of the symbols that you see all the time. I wonder if you know what this symbol is. It's the McDonald's sign, of course. You didn't even have to read anything and you knew what that was. What about this one? Yes, that's the Target sign. Do you like Target the store? Okay, what about this one? It's a stop sign, you're right. There are so many symbols that we have everywhere and we're just so used to seeing them that it triggers this thing in our brain and we know exactly what that means without the words. There are many symbols in the church and those symbols all have meaning. Today is Easter and we are so happy because Jesus is alive. He has risen. And so there are some symbols that we see on Easter to represent that too. For example, the egg. Why do we have eggs? It's new life. You see, when Jesus came back alive, there was new life there. But that's really hard to contemplate, I think. Coming back alive? How does that exactly work? And so, one of my favorite Easter symbols is, should we see what's inside? Is a butterfly. Yes! Throughout the service today, you are going to see the metamorphosis of the butterfly. Because a butterfly doesn't just start being a butterfly, does it? What does it start out as? A caterpillar. And the caterpillar then makes a cocoon or a chrysalis, right? And then while it's in the cocoon, it changes into this beautiful butterfly. And so that is why you'll see a lot of butterflies on Easter, because it really symbolizes that, that new birth. And that's why we see bunnies on Easter and chicks on Easter. 
because they all represent that new life. And when I was little, I always remembered that Easter was a time for me to have new life too. It was that time that I could say to myself, this is the day I'm going to make myself new. So this butterfly here, next time you see it, whether it's out in the world or just a picture of a butterfly, I hope that it reminds you of how much Jesus loves you. I hope you have a beautiful day and I hope to see you soon. Remember to be kind and do good. Bye! Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. God of creation, creating anew, working in the stillness, in the dark, silence broken, the stone is moved aside. With the women in the garden, we catch our breath. What words can describe shadows fleeing from the tomb? How can we tell of the morning, the world turned upside down? Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. There's dawn in the sky behind them, landscape changing color beneath their feet as they race the rising sun. Memories etched on their faces, betrayal and lost chances, seeing Jesus die, running through possibilities in their minds of what they are about to find and why. Linen wrappings, nothing else, now what?
but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. John and Peter trudge home. Not Mary. She stays to grieve in the garden. So much loss, so much death. No longer satisfied with letting others try to figure it out. Mary looks in, into her loss, into her grief, into the tomb. She sees what others could not, and she hears what others did not. A presence, a light, a voice, a person. Why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Like a voice from heaven, like a dream, the voice she is longing for, calling her by name. And Jesus looks at you, your name on his lips. And the world is new. You are made new. Jesus is forever alive. Easter is announced in every breath he takes. In every breath we take. Every sunrise, every bird song, every past flower. Love has won. Love's redeeming work is done. It is finished. It is beginning. Good morning and happy Easter. I'm Bodie Linney and I'll be performing an original song that I wrote called I Can't Carry This Cross Alone. Left his jeans and began his new brain. 
Two thousand years have not dried the tears. I can't carry this cross alone, and I have wandered far from home. And I can't carry this heavy old cross alone. I can feel your pain when you cried in vain. I know the loss of a losing coin toss. You stand in awe of what the other saw. Knowing your fate, you stood for all our sake. And I can't carry this cross alone. I have wandered far from home. And I can't carry this heavy old cross alone. And I can't carry this heavy old cross alone. Have you ever noticed what a roller coaster the Easter scripture actually is? There are ups and downs and running around and crying and celebrating and proclaiming. For years and years, I've come to church on Easter morning. I've led worship on Easter morning. And I think that I have just tuned out until the end of the story. I missed so much of what comes before Mary's realization that, in fact, Jesus is alive. And I wonder how many of us do that. How many of us just sort of tune out until we get to the good stuff, to the, to the parts of joy and resurrection, right? I wonder how often we tune out until we get to the end that we want, both with the scripture and perhaps with our lives too. So the story is, as you've just heard, Mary goes to the tomb and sees the stone missing. And she gets Peter and the disciple Jesus loved, presumably John, and they find the tomb empty. Jesus is nowhere to be found. In that moment, Peter and the other disciple leave. They, they head home. Maybe the sadness was too much to bear. Maybe they thought Jesus was, was gone for good. And they just couldn't stand still in the presence of that kind of grief. Maybe they realized that, that Jesus had been resurrected as he promised. We don't really know. We just know that they go home and they leave Mary at the tomb in her despair. And she couldn't leave it. She couldn't stop weeping. She couldn't stop searching for Jesus. She couldn't stop asking anyone she saw for where they took Jesus. And it's in that curiosity in that willingness to stick with the grief, in that faithfulness and certainty that she would find him, that she becomes the first to bear witness to Christ's resurrection. This year, I can't help but think that that curiosity, that commitment, that willingness to be right where she was in the midst of death and sadness is actually a part of the resurrection story. It wasn't Mary missing the resurrection or missing the new life. It was part of the new life. The thing is, friends, resurrections are joyous. New life is joyous, but resurrection, Easter, it isn't the end of a Disney movie, right? It's not the, and then they lived happily ever after. Roll credits. Resurrections are both endings and beginnings. And in both, there might be sadness and joy. Resurrection is not just one thing. It's a beautiful mess of all kinds of things because, because there was tenuous and precious and enjoyable life before that moment of Mary's witness. And there would be tenuous and precious life after it too. It's much the same for us today. Most of us come into this space, into this moment, knowing the grief that Mary held. We may not be living it right in this moment, but we know the grief all too well. We know the tears of depression. We know the longing for a loved one who has died. We know the, the roller coasters of marriages. We know the spirals of addictions. We know the ache 
of pain that feels like too much to bear. And yet, and yet, we sit here today in this moment as resurrection people, proclaiming also the truth that Mary first proclaimed, that Christ is risen, that weeping and death and sorrow and shame and pain do not have the final say over us now or ever. The joy and hope of resurrection does not mean that we will never experience the sorrow again. It doesn't even mean we're not experiencing it now. But what it does mean, what it does mean is that through it all, we can trust that Jesus will be there, sometimes unrecognizable, until we hear that famil familial and familiar whisper of our very own name, Mary, Roberta, Sharon, Whitney, Bob, Jean, Pete, Donna, Ella, Brett. It reminds us that through it all, Christ is alive. Through it all, through all of the human lives we live, through all of the mundane and the sorrow and the brokenness and the beauty, new life is on its way. Jesus is at work even when we don't know how to spot it yet, but like a seed underground, life is sprouting even when we can't yet see it taking shape. When we dare to stick with life through it all, with a curiosity and a searching for Christ, the promise is we will find the resurrection. We will find a way forward. We will find new life. We will find tendrils shooting up from the ground. We will find Jesus alive here and among us even today. And so that is the joy and the good news that we proclaim. We are still human, and yet in this imperfect human life, forever and always there are moments of resurrection that are worth seeking. There are moments of joy and hope that inevitably break in and that are worth our amazement. And as resurrection people, it's our calling to seek them out and to bear witness. It's our calling to be the Marys who stick with it, who dare to faithfully stay at the tomb until Jesus shows up. And it is our calling to be the ones to proclaim to all the world that resurrection is in fact here and new life is being born. Amen. All right, this is a glorious day. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not All my failures I tried to hide It was my doom Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old man knew Jesus when I met you Call my name And I ran out of that grave 
out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. I needed rest. I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when I call your name, Amen. And y'all, now we come to this time of giving. Um, it's a time where we get to give thanks to God for all of the gifts that God has already given us. And, and one of the ways that we do that is through um, offering our financial resources. And so if you have a gift that you would like to give to Canyon Lake to help us keep uh, proclaiming the, the new life of Easter for all of the world to hear, uh, you can do that in a few ways. You can do that on our website. Probably the easiest way, clumc.com, and just push the Give button there. Um, you can mail it to us at 35000 Canyon Lake Drive, uh, 57702. Or you can come, if you're local, you can come into the office during the week, because we always like to see you uh, when you come in and give you a hello. And then with that, I think we do have a couple of announcements. Hayden, I think you've got the first, right? Yes, I will go awesome. first. Um, next weekend is super exciting. It is going to be Camp Sunday. I always remember having a blast doing that when I was a middle schooler. And it's just a chance for all of our middle schoolers and youth to share their fun experiences that they've had at camp during their years that they've attended. And also it's an opportunity to highlight our, our camp scholarship. And if you'd like to give to that, that's an amazing way to help these kids reach camp and have an awesome way to grow in their love with God. That's awesome. I mean, camp really changed my life, so I'm excited that our kids get to go to that. And we also want to let you know that next Sunday, the 24th, is our first official Sunday with Dan Vader here as, as our interim halftime lead. So we hope that you can uh, tune in and join us next weekend, whether that's online or in person. We'll be so excited to have him here. Now, friends, we want to send you out with this blessing. Let us go forth in Christ's resurrection light. May we trust in you above all else. Seek you in all things. Find you in every place. Meet you among all people. Know you through everything. And love you beyond all telling. We pray in your name, living Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, thanks so much for being here for worship. Have an amazing Easter Sunday, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Happy Easter! Woohoo! You call my name.